for president who's seasoned through and through. But not so doggone seasoned that he won't try something new. A man who's old enough to know. And young enough to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. But it's Kennedy, 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 High school in Carmi, Illinois. I began there in 1958, my high school career. And then, of course, the 1960 elections came along and uh, the great debates between Nixon and Kennedy at that time. Well, I was in um, uh, classes of advanced American history and contemporary American history, and the, those debates just got all of us excited, you know. No matter whether you were Republican or Democrat, it was. Uh, it was like a war zone in that election uh, because both were popular candidates. My, my uh, um, upbringing was on a, a, a small dairy farm in uh, west central Wisconsin and, and I was in grade school uh, when uh, uh, President Kennedy was elected and I remember the excitement of my parents uh, about uh, the, uh, the youth uh, that he brought to the presidency. Uh, we, we were raised Catholic, so my mother was very excited about the first Catholic president. And uh, there was a sense that there were, were progressive things happening uh, uh, in the country. Kennedy was a major catalyst for potential social change in the way that our government was run, especially. And a lot of people didn't like that. Uh, a lot of people don't like change, no matter what it is. Kennedy was a president for the poor. That he actually cared about the poor. And allegedly, that was the reason for his assassination. Because he gave too much of government funding to the poor instead of the upper echelon of society. When I was in the Army as a 17, 18-year-old kid, uh, I was in Korea. Our outfit was the 1st Cav Division right up on the DMZ. And I would walk duty at night, in the middle of the night, and I'd be memorizing Kennedy's speeches. You know, every one of them. I knew every one of them by heart. Uh, I, would, I would be saying to myself, you know, we observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom. Signifying an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. Yes, he was very amiable person. Uh, he was easy to talk with. He wasn't... Uh, standoffish and uh, 
he did mention that we talked funny down here. <laughs> we did not have a Bostonian accent here, but he was uh, he was a very nice person to talk with, and he could talk on just about any subject you wanted to handle. Well, um, when you look at the pictures, you know he was approachable. Uh, he liked uh, interacting with people. Uh, it was before we had all of the uh, uh, walls that that go up around uh, a presidency, so there were, there was that connection. Uh, and he himself and and the Kennedy family used the the, the intelligence and the resources that they had for uh, public good. I think uh, Kennedy's visit to SIU should be as significant to us in Southern Illinois as the Lincoln-Douglas debates hmm. and uh, the fact that they took uh, one of them took place down in uh, Jonesboro. Right. And so I think that we need to uh, latch on to that and claim it. And uh, I don't know how many times through the decades since that we've had that many people in McAndrews Stadium and uh, not to mention that many people lined up and down uh, Illinois Avenue all at the same time, thousands. One of the greatest U.S. presidents in the history of this great country was here at Jackson County, Carmody, Illinois, McAndrew Stadium. Presidential candidate. Then he became president. So then, therefore, because that that historical fact, McAndrew Stadium should have been a historical moment based on that fact. McAndrew Stadium should never have been torn down. At the university, the crowd was such uh, at pushing in on us and so crowded that he could not open the doors of the convertible to get out and go to the podium where he was supposed to speak. So he stepped in the seat, stepped on back on the tonneau cover, and it didn't suit him, and so he stepped on the seat again and over the windshield and onto the hood of the Pontiac. And all I could think about, because I was the one that was going to have to clean that car up, is who in the hell's going to take the scratches off the hood of that car? That's all I could think about. I think it's very special and I think I've known a number of people now old timers who were there that day and who were energized by it. Uh, it was certainly a highlight in the uh, uh, Delight Morris era for this university and for the Southern Illinois region. Sure, it was a big day in my life and it was probably the biggest day of my father's entire life. He got to get close to his idol candidate. Uh, he got to talk with him all day long. He and when he was in that car or when I when I was in when he was in my car. It was just an, an, an important occasion in my dad's life. We left pretty early that morning. I can't remember the exact time that he arrived in Harrisburg, but uh, the crowd was already a thousand or so thick, I would imagine, by the time we got there. And we were never able to get close to the stage, but uh, uh, viewing from afar, uh, we could see uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy, we could see Kenny Gray and the other members of his entourage up on the stage. And it was exciting for me. I was a 15-year-old kid. In Harrisburg, the crowds were so tight and people want a souvenir of the president. I'm surprised they didn't jerk his coat off. They jerked off the antenna. They, they stole the tonneau cover that covers the convertible top when the top's down. They even tore, they tore the rear view mirrors off the car. Uh, the, they tried to get the glove compartment door and couldn't get it off. I'm talking, this is people as we were driving by. I'm sure that, that he was a little bit apprehensive about that kind of a crowd, uh, as 
Kenny Gray and the governor and Senator Douglas and all of them were. They'd never, I don't think they'd ever experienced anything like that. Just one of those things people never forget when a president or somebody who's about to become president comes and campaign. Uh, we've got pictures of Barack Obama, who was a state senator at the time when he visited the Paul Simon Institute. Uh, we treasure those because he came and uh, he was an admirer of Paul Simon's and now we uh, say we knew Barack Obama when he was a state senator. And it's like that with John Kennedy's visit to Southern. Hey, if you ask uh, after he became president, what was the guy who drove me and Harris? But he wouldn't know. No, of course he wouldn't not. even know what kind of car it was. When it finally came down to Illinois being the last state to weigh in, and of course Chicago being the last area to weigh in, we were very proud of the fact that he had campaigned vigorously in Southern Illinois, and that our votes counted for something too. I would say that the act in and of itself, his presence here, is not something that necessarily needs to be enshrined in memory, but rather the things that he was trying to do, the things that he stood for, the fact that this place was a part of that and a part of him trying to accomplish those things, I'd say that it, it, that deserves to be remembered. Well, it's clearly part of our history. And it was a time of, of change for the United States um, in civil rights and in public service and the way that we, we approached uh, uh, science and, 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 and world relations. So he has a legacy and uh, there are many people still alive today, myself included, uh, who, who remember him and, and, and uh, uh, really make that connection. Um. What was extraordinary uh, about Kennedy and his legacy was just the idea that uh, he was shedding light on some areas of American life that had been sort of uh, swept under the carpet and generations before. You had the civil rights movement, okay? You had the women's movement. You had the environmental movement. You had the United Mine Workers of America going into the mines of Southern Illinois and saying, no, 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 you're gonna pay a decent wage. You're gonna have safety in the mines. You're gonna have a pension and a retirement for your people. You have gotta provide some kind of health care for people that go down in the belly of the earth and mine your coal and come back up and they're dead at 37 years old with black lung disease. We watched all of those things begin to change America. I would go so far as to say that that's why we have rovers on Mars and that's why Voyager has just recently exited our solar system is because Kennedy decided, no, we're going to take it to the extreme. We're going to go all the way to the moon. We're going to put people on there. If he wouldn't have made that call and if we wouldn't have risen to that occasion, we probably would not have half of the knowledge that we have about space now. President Kennedy, with his incredible oratorical style, and his ability to motivate a whole generation, he brought those changes about. He, he, he made it possible for us to feel like you count, and you don't count later, you count now. Half a century before the internet was, uh, social media was ever to be on the scene, he was able to, during those times, move the young people of the country and get them thinking about some things that, in such a way that they hadn't. He made us feel, he made our generation feel like, you're not the future generation, you're not the next generation, we're not passing things on to you, you are already part of the great democratic society of the greatest country in the world. That's what he made us feel like. And when he stood up in his inaugural address and he said, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, rather ask what you can do for your country. Well, gosh, that was like throwing gasoline on the fire for those of us that were young and enthused about government, wanted to become a part, you know, of the solutions. And, uh, and we took that to heart.
like a man who answers straight, a man who's always fair. We'll measure him against the others, and when you compare, you cast your vote for Kennedy and the change that's overdue. So it's up to you, it's up to you, it's strictly up to you. Yes, it's Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. The president went in and did his thing, and then he came out and he said, I would like to have a Coke. Uh, is there some place we can get a Coke? And that is everybody, of course, said, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, here, here's a Coke machine. And a Coke was a nickel, and nobody had a nickel. They all had $50, $100 bills, that, nobody had a nickel. And I said, I have a nickel. So I got to buy the pres future president of the United States a coat for a nickel.